Welcome to the fish tank. Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to part 9 of the uh, mini bandsaw build. Uh, between the last video and this, I had to take this vise off of uh, the mill and therefore I had to go through the long, tedious process of uh, repositioning it and zeroing it out so I can uh, mill uh, without uh, too much variation in the pieces. So anyway, the uh, purpose of this video is to build the upper array that's going to hold uh, the flywheel. The flywheel on the top, that's going to have uh, the bandsaw on it. And also a need to be able to adjust it for tension. So uh, what I needed is a piece of metal. This is uh, a 2 inch wide by 1 inch thick uh, 6061 aluminum. So what I want to do here is this, a robust piece of metal and I'm going to machine both ends nice and flat and true to each other. Uh, so pretty much without taking it out of the vise I'm going to uh, machine the first end and then go and machine the, the, the back end. You won't be able to see the back end very much uh, but it's exactly the same process as machining the other one. Now, the only difference is I'm going to have to take a little bit more material off because I also want to machine it to length at this point. Uh, I don't really think the length is that important, but I wanted to keep it at least uh, reasonably similar to uh, what the upper armatures are going to be like. Because I do have to build a framework up there as well, uh, which will be in, a, in the next video. Uh, which will be the uh, the counterpart to this, which will help me uh, tighten things out. So this main piece here uh, is going to need to have a bunch of holes drilled in it. But uh, before we get to that, uh, what I need to do here is also... Uh, <laughs> actually, this is not really that important, but... Uh, these are the two arms that are going to hold uh, the flywheel. The half-inch rod that goes through it are going to go through this. And for some reason, I think mostly just for practice, I decided to machine these to uh, the exact same length. Same process as with the, the main block. I will swing this around the other side and machine them again to the same length. Uh, it actually did turn out to be kind of useful because uh, when I have to drill the half inch hole, I didn't want to end up having to measure from the long end, so it actually was kind of convenient that they're the same length. So anyway, these are going to get machined down. You can see during the process here that they uh, were kind of out of uh, sync as far as uh, trueness was concerned. And of course you can't have a build video without me showing off the the uh, bat, uh, bat saw, the uh, belt sander build I did a quite a while ago now. And it's still working just fine. Uh, I haven't had any issues with it whatsoever. So anyway, I've machined the three pieces. And this is how they're going to fit together. Uh, the main block at the top and the two arms that are coming down the side and I'm going to machine two quarter inch bolts each to hold these two side panels on and then this is the flywheel it's going to rest in between them and I'm gonna to have to trim this bolt obviously later on but I'm gonna write all I need to do right now is to drill the holes through there so that it will fit properly but first I need to attach uh, these two arms to that main block so what I've done here is I've uh, set it all up, I put a parallel, well, <laughs> an extruded piece of aluminum as my parallel, and what I'm going to do is go through a very long, tedious process now of uh, setting up the first hole. Because once I have that first hole set up, uh, it's all symmetrical, so I can just flip and do the one on the other side, and then do the other two holes on the other one. And it's actually really convenient because I find the hardest part about all this is actually the aligning, getting it perfect. You can see I'm using a magnifying glass there. I, I don't think it's really necessary. Uh, actually, that's actually not quite true because it turns out that it is necessary. I'm trying to get more accurate as I start, uh, you know, I'm not a machinist. I just like building things. So, But I want to get a little bit more um, proficient with being as accurate as possible. So what I'm going to do here is I'm trying to get it so that I can drill these holes, which are the exact thickness of the bolts, and then drill the same and trap the holes that they're going to fit into on the main, uh, the main thick part, and then be able to just bolt them into place. Uh, to do that, I'm going to have to be within uh, probably ten thousandth of an inch, maybe a little less, um, to make sure that the threads won't bind. So anyway, what I've done here is I've set this up now vertically, and this is probably the worst part because even though I've machined these 
uh, to be parallel, it's still an awful lot of distance between the actual vise itself and uh, where I'm going to be drilling. So I was very concerned about this. I did spend a fair amount of time getting this set up. And again, I think what I'm going to need to do is I have to build some better way. I mean, it looks perfectly straight there, but the thing is, is it doesn't have to be out there that much for this to actually not do what it needs to do. So anyway, I drilled the holes. Uh, because these are going to be uh, tapped, uh, this is a, a thinner uh, drill bit than the one uh, previously. And also, I'm going to be drilling this a lot deeper than I need to go because uh, it's going to be a blind tap. Uh, I don't want to tap all the way to the bottom. I'm going to run a, a, a probably a fairly a smaller, well, much smaller bolt than it's going to need for this. Uh, but I didn't want it to end up binding into pieces in the bottom and tearing any of the possible threads down there. So I just drilled a deep hole and then I'll just flush them all out. And of course, without taking it out of the vise, I am going to put in the tap and put it in place and then by hand uh, uh, tap at least the first uh, you know half inch of the hole. That way when I, here you go, <laughs> when I flip it over here and start running uh, the rest of the threads through, uh, it will uh, be straight, and that's kind of kind of critical. Otherwise, you'll end up with a bit of a wonkiness to the bolt, and uh, that will show when you uh, uh, put the framing on. So anyway, I'm going to put this on now, and this is where I found out that uh, apparently I need more practice at machining, because it doesn't take much to be off by a little bit. So I, like you see, these bolts just fit through the holes, and the thing is, is there was just enough distance off here that it binds a bit and then that's that's not good so what I had to do is it's not a total loss what I'm gonna do here is just uh, take these out and then use the next drill bit size up unfortunately it, it gives me a bit of a sixteenth of an inch wobble in it but again it's not too critical because I'm gonna have two bolts on this side two bolts on the other side and then a half inch rod at the bottom all holding this into place so I don't really expect I'm going to get any kind of wobble. And the good thing about it is it did give me a chance to make sure everything was perfectly square, uh, which I'm going to call a silver lining to uh, not quite getting it in the right position. Anyway, I'll keep working on uh, trying to get more precise with this. Uh, it was actually the part of this I was the most worried about, but it turned out pretty square. And then after final adjustments, it actually uh, worked out pretty good because I uh, once I put the other side on, uh, and I run the micrometer down it. It was pretty much similar all the way through, which is cool. There's about a maybe a five thou give from one end to the other, which is uh, <laughs> very good for me. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna drill the half inch holes. Uh, this is where uh, machining these two pieces the same length was really quite useful because it did allow me to measure from the opposite end, which I don't like to do. And then I need to drill two half inch holes through this one inch piece of aluminum. The setups are all the same, so I uh, left all that out. And then what I'm going to do here is just put it all together. Those two top holes are where the rods are going to fit through for me to uh, tighten this all down, uh, to add tension to the blade. So that's uh, kind of crucial, but that will be in the next video. So anyway, we're getting to the end here. I'm just going to assemble this and show you how it works. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you like this style of video, please like and or subscribe. And next week, I said, I will uh, attach this to... Uh, the bandsaw, hopefully get a blade on it as well, and get it all running, which would be really, really cool. Because uh, that would be the um, sort of like the last proof of uh, concept here uh, that this is going to work once I have the saw blade on, balanced. And like I still need to balance these wheels, and once they are and getting it run true, that would be, uh, that'd be excellent. That's what I'm <laughs> really looking forward to. So what I'm going to do is, this is fast forward still, but near the end what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it down to regular speed, and you can see uh, how this all works. Now because of the style I've chosen, because I wanted to make this as sturdy as possible, um, the process installing this is a little tedious. You have to run the, each bolt through, and then feed the rod through. But the only time I'm ever going to have to take this apart is when I make adjustments to it, or also when you know, blade finally wears out and that sort of stuff. But the nice thing about it is if it does um, have a problem with the staying true and the blade comes off, it's not going to go anywhere. It has a lot of metal between uh, me and it.
So the assembly's almost done here. It only actually took about uh, three or four minutes, so it's not really a big deal. Uh, but the nice thing about this style I've been finding, especially when I was uh, working with the uh, bottom wheel, is it allows me to uh, set up a bit of tension on the wheel and adjust uh, how it, uh, it rotates in its uh, bearings, and it uh, makes it balancing it a lot easier. I'm just going to uh, do set it up by hand here and give it a quick spin, and uh, there we you get to see it uh, rotating. Uh, but it does definitely need a bit of balancing before I put a blade on this. So anyway, here it is, spinning away. And that's the way it's going to sit. Uh, sorry, it's a slightly out of uh, the frame there. But uh, that's how it's going to be in the, the bandsaw itself. And then, uh, like I said, I'm going to have two rods on the top. And that will be where the tension is. But that will be for the next video. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. And I will see you in the next one.